Previously on The Last of Us, Season 1, Episode 8. Joel and Ellie are back on the road, and that's kind of what I thought happened. What do you think about Episode 9? Uh, episode 9, I really liked it. I give it an 8 out of 10. Okay. Uh, I didn't like how casual Joel and Ellie were in a new place. Wandering around, making jokes. Meanwhile, there's skyscrapers and openings and who knows what. True. Um... I do think the Fireflies need a better security organization. Getting owned by one man. <laughs> That's, right. Uh, That's right. The important thing is, though, was Joel justified? My answer is yes, he was justified in his actions. I'll talk right. about that later. Fine. And uh, will Evie, Ellie ever forgive Joel if she ever finds out uh, for, for a fact about what he did? Don't know. It's uh, the end of the season, so we'll find out in the future but overall i really liked the episode i liked the controversy and the, the emotions and so eight out of ten well what did you think i thought it was a 10 out of 10 i was hyped i was feeling this episode first of all they made it like the, the mission of the entire season was to get ellie to the medical place and they got there and and marlene's back i like marlene i love marlene and marlene is a very good leader i think she she handles the the Boston DZ very nicely, and and she made it all the way out here to Salt Lake City. Excellent. That being said, Joel fucked up. Joel lost his mind. He has lost his path. He's he's fallen in love with the surrogate daughter that that she didn't ask to be his surrogate daughter, but he's putting that on her. There's a mission. There's a mission. It's the apocalypse. Humanity is fading away. Our species is about to go under. And there's a mission for, for all of humanity that's yet to be born. And Joel, Joel chooses his emotional needs over everyone that could be in the future. His duties to the species. He fucked it up. So overall, 10 out of 10 episode. Super good. But fuck Joel. We will discuss. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, we we have different takes on the episode. <laughs> okay, totally okay, calm it down, calm it down. Okay, okay, okay. Here, okay, here we go. Let's talk about the Last of Us season one, episode nine. Let's go into. Let's it. do it. Let's jump in. Okay, so this is the opening scene, and I was like, "How did this situation happen?" This is Ellie's mother, pregnant, like as pregnant as could be, about yeah. to give birth running away from an infected through a field in the middle of nowhere how how, how did she get into this situation this is absurd that's like right. how many bad choices did she make to get to this point that's right because she's super pregnant i mean she she gives she gives birth like unexpectedly so she's ready to pop and so mm -hmm. she should have been hunkered down somewhere what are you doing walking around even in a field i mean i just love to see how this happened because this is it's crazy i don't have anything more to say than it's crazy how did this happen cool scene but how did this happen how did this happen <laughs> oh yeah let's watch this i want you to take her with you to boston find someone to bring her up and make sure that she's safe i can't do that you can't okay so Marlene says she can't do that. First off, if you can't do it, lie. Don't tell the truth. She's yeah, dying. She's dying. She's her little dying. baby bear's she there. Want, yeah. Just tell her the comforting truth in her last moments. And second off, you seriously can't find anybody to take care of the future of humanity, which is, in this case, a single baby. Come on. Yeah, yeah. You don't you, know, you don't know yeah. which babies might be the future of humanity. You got to roll the dice that all of them are, may, might be. Who knows? But you're saying there's nobody in Boston that would be like, here's a baby. Anybody want to take care of it? And everybody's like, no, I got my own shit to take care of. Uh-uh. Don't want to touch you know that. What? You know what? That might you give know. me hope in my life. I want to be depressed all the time. Like, no. You know what? I, I got the read on this. She doesn't want a baby cramping up her style. She, she's looking for some single men. <laughs> <laughs> but she's, she's, she's going to have to raise it herself. <laughs> oh, that's she's right. Decided. She's being asked to find somebody to raise it. She's like, no, no, no admin, no. administration, I can't do it. I don't <laughs> want the paperwork. In fact, I'm going to kill this baby right here. I got a henchman outside, but I, I am going to hand it off to him, but that doesn't count. Doesn't count. <laughs> so, Marlene. Lie or do it. Like, yeah. what the heck? Yeah. Marlene. 
You could, you could just, you could lie to the mom, kill the mom, then kill the baby. Oh, that's super sad. But right, right, but right, but like, right. like that, that mom is about to die. Like, be nice. Yeah. Learn to fib for the greater good. My God. My God. This will come up again. Oh, okay. You didn't cover the baby ears. Cover her ears. <laughs> Clearly not covering the baby ears. One job. He had one job. Just cover oh, the baby ears. Cover the baby ears. Didn't cover the baby ears. Now the like baby's crying. What are you doing? Yeah, shooting a firearm in an enclosed place. Like, are those baby eardrums damaged? Is that why she doesn't hear Joel very well? Oh, uh, maybe. She, she got some ear damage because this guy couldn't cover up her ear. <laughs> Your arm is right there. Just give it a little, little cover, a little pat. Right. You even have some cloth to mm -hmm. gently cover the ears with. Well, what are you doing? What Bro. are you doing? What are you doing? This maybe maybe this is early Firefly days. They've not figured out the discipline of how to handle babies yet. Like right. they haven't had training for it. <laughs> it's above his pay grade, type of thing. It's, yeah, he's like, nope, nope, not doing it. Absolutely not. Oh yeah, this is Joel. This is them heading towards Salt Lake City. They're almost there. He just finds cans. It's twenty years after the apocalypse hit. Oh, yeah. I just okay. Like good Water condition, yeah. Out in the, it's not in. I guess it's good that it's not in a store because a store would probably be ransacked by then. But like, is it good that he's just in the middle of the freeway and <laughs> finds it? <laughs> I mean, what a find! Because that would all be pilfered by now, mm -hmm. with an unfaded label and an unrusted can. What the heck? To be fair, somewhere along the freeway in between here and Boston, there's like a there's like a magazine that Ellie threw out. So like you could be walking along the road and just find, you know, dirty mags or clean food. You, you can't eat a porno mag. Is that a challenge? <laughs> I, mean, I mean you can eat it, it's just not nutritious. <laughs> no, I mean it was encrusted, so God, it may have nutrition. No. Oh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you can't. I, I stand corrected. You can find nutrition on along the side of the road. Oh, yeah. So they finally arrive to Salt Lake City. We're wandering around Salt Lake City to do Joel's plan to go up a skyscraper and do a recon. Mm -hmm. I noticed their backpacks. They've been hiking for hundreds of miles. They have no hip support. Ellie's backpack isn't even like Cinch. centered on her shoulder. She's got like scoliosis or something. Joel's looks really uncomfortable, kind of this dragging back. I mean, That's right. I would w really want a backpack that has nice hip support, nice shoulder straps that I can tighten and loosen on command, just because I'm carrying a lot over long distances. I see people wear their backpacks like this uh, over at the university, and like that feels like it would hurt my back, just hanging low like that. I like it nice yeah. and tight and secure. You can move around and it's tight to your body. That feels good for like my abs and my back. This looks very uncomfortable for them. They're gonna have back problems when they're walking around. And and to be fair to the people who are like going to school or college or whatever with backpacks, they're only, they only have the backpacks on for a limited time during the day. So if, it, if it is gonna cause problems, probably won't cause any chronic problems because it's on for such a short time. Hmm. They've been walking for thousands of miles. I don't have anything more to say other than they must be uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Was this smart? What are they? Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. One, two. Boost. Oh. You got it? Yeah. Damn it, Ellie. Okay. So my comment on this was you're in the apocalypse. There ain't no hospitals. There ain't no ambulances. So if you get a twisted ankle, twisted knee, a broken bone, something with your shoulder, you know, it's going to have to heal on its own. So you want to avoid, I would think, any situation where you might fall, twist an ankle, break a bone. I just would avoid boosting altogether, you know, right. like check the floor, look for a stairway. If there's no stairway, it looks like you're going to the next building to avoid. I mean, if what if Joel lost his balance the, or the, the pallet slipped from underneath him and 
Ellie goes flying, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's not worth it. Looking at this pipe here that's broken and rusting, I'm suspecting that there's a there's the other part of the pipe at the bottom. He could have slipped on that and that could have punctured him. And that would be much worse, much worse than the knife wound that he had before. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just is so dangerous. But, <laughs> and then Ellie like throwing the ladder back down to, to Joel just to make sure that he's in, you know, peril. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I mean, but good teamwork because they're like they're like, hey, let's do this thing, let's boost it, you boost. I mean, but also bad teamwork because she like immediately bails on him. But but yeah. what I saw in this scene was that the ladder before Ellie even touches it, it's already hanging off the edge. Like Joel could have used the the barrel of his rifle and just slipped it in the loop and then just inched the ladder off and caught it on his way down. I mean, still that's risky because like he can get cut as it comes down, but it's less risky than climbing up there. Mm -hmm. Not, but even even if he were able to get the ladder, putting a ladder on top of like five pallets that are all slip slidey. Ooh, that's right. And then climbing it. You're just asking for, you know, a broken arm. Right. You know, maybe you get away with it here, but if you continue to do this, you're going to get hurt. I was doing safety training at one of the national laboratories, and they were telling me that we spent like three hours on radiation safety. But what were the three biggest risks, like the three biggest accidents? Guess, go on, guess. Uh, I'm going to say like lab spills. No, 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 actually not. No, it's sim simpler than you think. It cutting, was cutting yourself on a beaker. Very close. It was actually boosting. It's when they would people instead of getting ladders, they would try to get to the second floor. They would lift each other up, and they would slip and fall on rusted pipes. Mm -hmm. Fun fact: the national labs don't have stairs because if you're a real scientist, you don't need stairs. That's right. You're levitating you just, above everybody else, so you just make it to the second floor by accident. You just general relativity time dilate, and then you're up there. No, no, no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it it was it was like trip hazards, like just falling. It was climbing on things that aren't supposed to be climbed on, and then bicycles. Like, yeah, there's like super dangerous nuclear radiation, but like the thing, the way people get hurt are doing things like this, right? Like mundane ladders, pallets. You take it for granted. Yeah. You think it's just going to be easy. I just won't mess it up. But there's something you didn't realize about the stability of the base, and then you fall. Oh, good. If you're in a national lab, you call the ambulance. They repair whatever's the damage is. You're fine. You're good to go. Yeah. Here, it's a death sentence, perhaps. I mean, how are you going to get medical treatment? Even if you find a doctor, that doctor might be allied with an enemy team. Now you're mm -hmm. a prisoner. Cool. Yep. Play it safe. Just play it safe. Agreed. Oh, yeah. So this was inside the building that they were you know, doing unsafe they're, things. And here's scouting. that stack of pallets. Is How many pallets is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe mm -hmm. seven. Holy crap. Okay. I was just thinking, this building hasn't really been stripped clean. There's lots of potential supplies in here. Oh, heck yeah. Like these I mean, lights, right? this light right here. You know? <laughs> I, guess, I guess people went through and took the light bulbs out, <laughs> but they left the wires, the generator, and the floodlight. Yeah. The bricks and the pallets. This is this is good firewood. I mean, yeah, okay. if you have to, you can use it for other things too. Yeah, a lot of good stuff in here. If you go to the left, there's more. Ooh. I see like a hose right here with a little rolly deal. I see buckets, little gas buildings. tanks. Yeah, like I'm surprised this place hasn't been picked clean by you know the people living in the area. In fact, if it's high up, people should just live in here. Yeah. It's a secure location with good visibility. Actually, that ladder, that could have been somebody living up there. They pulled the ladder up when they're inside. They, these uh, Ellie and Joel could have walked into a trap. Ooh, oh, maybe. boy. Oh, boy. Which is why there may have been no stairs. They got lucky. They got lucky. Oh, but when they go up there, they find the giraffe. Maybe the giraffe ate the people that were there already. I don't know what giraffes eat. Greens. I don't think they're meat eaters. Ah, uh, this is the apocalypse. Uh, there's been like a you know fall. Maybe maybe if giraffes had the option, they would eat people. I don't know. I'm not. Maybe. A, I'm not a giraffologist. Me neither. 
But this is a cool homage to the game because, you know, it's a cool moment in the game. Mm-hmm. Also, it reminded me of Jurassic Park, that one scene. Yeah. The brontosaurus. Yeah, I thought that this draft, I was like, I wonder, is he going to sneeze? Is he going to sneeze and glue them to the wall? <laughs> <laughs> I thought the same thing. Super fun. Oh, yeah, so this is down in like the army base thing that fell apart like a week or so after the uh, temporary medical base. That's right. And I was just, again, there's just supplies out here that seem useful. Oh, yeah. you know, it's all dirty and stuff, but like tables and equipment and tubing and wiring. Well, even surprise, even surprise this, been picked clean. Even this beat up fabric on on these cots. Like you, you wash it off, maybe boiling water if you, if you need to, and then you can strip it down, and it's bandages. Like this, this is all very usable stuff. Mm-hmm. These electronics you could take apart; they have parts inside. Mm-hmm. Um, power in The Last of Us doesn't seem to be an issue, so some of this equipment actually might be usable if if you could repair it or it isn't too da- too damaged. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Whoever is living nearby this base, they didn't do their work and scavenge. Yeah. Hmm. Surprising, that's all. Sarah died, and I couldn't see the point anymore. Simple as that. And I wasn't scared either. I was ready. I couldn't have been more ready. And when I went to pull the trigger, I, I flinched. Still don't know why. Anyway, the reason I'm telling you all this is... I know why you're telling me all this. Yeah, I reckon you do. I don't have anything to say other than I know I really felt Joel in that scene. You know, he's been lacking purpose and he's been depressed and sad for a good reason. He lost his daughter, you know, he, and he's suicidal and he's finally sharing that with somebody. He may not even have shared this with Tess. He may not have even really been aware of his feelings until encountering Ellie. That's right. So, yeah, yeah he's really opened up. That's true. Mm-hmm. He, and he feels safe and vul- uh, being vulnerable with her. Yeah. A, a testament to how they've grown together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then they're having too much fun and bonding too well. That's right. That they forget the tactical situation at hand. I mean, even just they're having this heart to heart on this concrete slab here. Mm-hmm. And just look at the windows. Yeah. I and mean, I would feel very vulnerable Um, they're in potentially hostile territory you know where they can see you and you can't see them because it's there's too many windows to look in did they scout every one of these tents no there could be guys living in them Mm -hmm. who were watching them there could be people that are unliving in them because you see some cordies in there all right they could be infected or who knows what they could take this cross and take it and strap it on their backpack to act like medics I mean, it's a war crime if it's a war, but they're not in a war, so. Right? And they can petition the Geneva Convention people over in The Hague or whatever mm-hmm. for <laughs> a trial. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, well, that's right. I mean, they could salvage stuff here, and in the act of salvaging, they can check out if things are dangerous. They really shouldn't just be sitting out in the open. Actually, they've, they've been caught in, out in the open situations before. Yeah. So I would, if I'm in that situation, I'd feel agoraphobic, Absolutely. right? And so I would be under tents or through buildings and all that kind of stuff. And it would be an agoraphobia that's helping me survive. That's right. Um, the next clip is Ellie and Joel are, well, Ellie is reading the pun book and they're just wandering, making noise. It's no great that they're having fun. Open spaces. What's that? It's great that they're having fun, but... This is risky. People are making apocalypse Miss. jokes like there's no tomorrow. Too soon? No, it's topical. <laughs> oh, I love this one. Moon rocks taste better than earth rocks. Why? Because they're meteor. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's a, you. That, that was actually good. That's a zero out of all ten. Right, all right. What did the green grape say to the purple grape? Breathe, you idiot. That's a three out of ten. Five, seven. Minimum. I'll give it a uh-uh. five. Five out five. of ten. So, so right before that guy showed up and threw... I guess the flashbang flashbang i wasn't so flashy but um i was like what's the, what the, look around head on a swivel tactical situation there's gonna be somebody and then there was mm-hmm. i was so bad at joel and ellie like 
you can have this conversation, but maybe in a building in a corner where you kind of feel safe and secure, mm -hmm. not in the open. They didn't I mean, see this guy standing out in the open coming. You you called it exactly. They were not aware of what's going on with them. They could have that conversation, as you said, in a like closed off area when they're like settling in for the night. They could also have one of them walk backwards. That would still, I mean, stupid. You would trip on something and hurt yourself. Like, but that would still be more aware of what's around them. They have the entire the entire behind them and above them. Mm -hmm. They're just not paying any attention to. Right. And I feel so overwhelmed yeah. by the windows. If we can click back a little bit, you know, just uh, as they're walking. Yeah, just like this, like all the windows. I felt so much anxiety just watching this from the windows. Heck, even if it's not like an open window with a sniper, like there could be someone, a closed window with someone with binoculars and they're just relaying to yeah. somebody else like, oh, they're right there right now. Yeah. Hmm. Gotta be safe. Yeah. And you know that you're in, I mean, friendly-ish territory. You know that you're supposed to be somewhere around there, but they may not know that you're on route. Like they may not know who you are. And right. in fact, that's exactly what happens. They don't know who they are. The, the fireflies don't know who Joel and Ellie are and they get flashbanged. Right. And you don't even know if the fireflies are there. We don't know who's controlling this territory. Is it That's some kind of point. like territorial dispute and raiders and who knows? To risk. To so anxiety. risk. Okay, so after the flashbang, Joel wakes up and and Marlene's there. Marlene's there and she explains to him the situation. But I it didn't make sense to me. Let let's watch. We all oh yeah. Just take me to her. I can't. She's being prepped for surgery. What surgery? Our doctor. He thinks that the cordyceps in Ellie has grown with her since birth. Why is she in surgery? It produces a kind of chemical messenger. It makes normal cordyceps think that she's cordyceps. It's why she's immune. He's going to remove it from her, multiply the cells in a lab, produce those chemical messengers, and then we can give it to everyone. He thinks it could be a cure, Joel. A cure. Cordyceps grows inside the brain. It does. So I'm not a biologist, so I'm not a medical person, and the cordyceps infection is not real. I mean, we're watching a show. But it seems to me like you would do the least invasive procedures first. So like they've been there for a day, and the doctor's like, it's in the brain, let's cut her open. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is your only case of someone that has an immunity of some variety. You gotta preserve her life as long as possible. The first step is like hair clippings and fingernails and then spit swab and then blood tests, like things that you can do without hurting her. So I, I didn't understand why, like why, why would the doctor go after something so dangerous just right off the bat? Do you agree with me that Joel was justified? Justified in doing what? Rescuing Ellie. So we're getting we're, we're getting incompetence markers oh. left and right. Right. They're not doing biopsies. They're not taking it slow. They're going to go ahead and kill Ellie, their only sample. That's right. In a sense, before we need to take their time. I'm getting incompetence markers here and there. What if they're going to kill your only person who can give you the cure because of their incompetence? <laughs> That's right. And there is no clear winner between Firefly and Fredra. Like, neither one claims better abilities in medicine and or science and or organization even. Mm. Shoot. So, oh, I see what you're saying. So we've got, well, not only, so you got one doctor. We don't have these like huge supply chains of competence with, you know, People cross-checking each other. And, and cross-checking and a whole guy, institution. And it's hard to do medical re research. This guy could be and a quack. This guy could be a total quack. He's just killing people and saying he's doing good work. So I was feeling incompetence markers, dingy places, no lighting, terrible security, no supply chains, no, guess, no checking from other people. I'm getting incompetence markers. I'm thinking they're wrecking our last sample of humanity's cure. Oh shit! So That's right. if it's if it's true that they're right on the money and this is the right move, hundred percent, then Joel was wrong. But I think he's justified here. Okay, so that's not the reason he did, he did it. But 
I think the bad science we're seeing here and all these right. question marks means he did the right thing. I mean, I'm I'm not a scientist in the medical field, but like I can still see you don't kill your own your only sample. Like you do the least invasive stuff possible. That's a very good point. I did not think about that. There there are strong incompetency markers going on for Joel, and that questions the legitimacy of are these people right? Do they know what they're doing, or they're just just mm-hmm. shooting from the hip? Ooh. Right, same day they're killing Ellie. I mean, you could go, you should take months at least, right, to do all kinds of who knows what before you kill her. I mean, did they even have time to interview her and see what her experiences were like? No. There's a lot of work to be done before the decision to kill is made. Right. I mean, what if what if a blood transfusion would work? Yeah. They didn't even test that. They didn't even test it. And is it only in the brain? I mean, I'm sure there's remnants of cordyceps around the body, but there's high, highest concentration in the brain. Maybe you... It would be better if you could sample in a non-lethal way. I mean, so, actually, actually, yeah, I see exactly what you're saying. So it's similar. I imagine it's similar to the, how the immune system works, where there's some type of chemistry on every individual cell that identifies your organs as your organs. And there is a little bit of wiggle room, and that's how we can have organ transplants. But like, your body can tell when it's a human cell versus not human cell, for sure. And so there's there's... If the what they're saying in the show is they're saying that the brain creates a chemical that tells the cordyceps that the rest of your body is okay, don't worry about it, don't kill, then that chemistry should be floating around in the body. And how does the body do that? It distributes it to the blood system. So the there should be in her blood samples whatever chemical that they're looking for. I don't, I don't think you have to go to her brain. Right, and that would be last resort anyway. Right. So So, so yeah, this doc is... Quack. This this doc is not thinking about things. Right. That's that's my viewpoint. Ooh. Oh man, do I need to take my opinion back? <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So well. then Joel goes on this incredible <laughs> rampage. Okay. He, so if it's true, they're going to kill Ellie, the last person in the world the only person in the world who has the cure in her body yep. all of these people are worth sacrificing but it's still a crazy rampage go ahead it fucking shook me oh my god okay <laughs> the fuck are you doing keep walking so, yeah bro so joel has lost his mind <laughs> <laughs> so so when i when i was like oh, i should get this recorded i was thinking joel has lost his mind he's lost his mind his his eye on the mission he's going to go rescue ellie to steal her away actually from the people that are going to save humanity he is a he's lost he's let his emotions for his connection to the surrogate daughter decide for him what's best for himself and and re- with disregard to humanity. However, I didn't think about what you said. Okay, let's watch this. <laughs> oh, I'm done for this. He doesn't blink this whole time. Uh, not the dead guy. Joel doesn't blink the whole time. Yeah, he's got psycho eyes. He's a psycho eyes. <sighs> totally In calm. The back. Good reload. Casual Good reload. mag reload. Yep, yep. Disciplined. If I could reload that well in Call of Duty. Okay. <laughs> reload one. Oof. He's surrendering. Surrendering. Oof. Not a, not a flinch. Not at all. Or even for goes for the melee. Kill. And it's not even a quick kill. He, he killed him fairly slowly. Oof. Now he's burst firing. Rampage firing. He's rampage. Absolutely. Just bodies. Joel's lost it. He's lost it. He's lost. His his emotions are just running wild, and he's not he's not thinking. Mm-hmm. I think <laughs> you're, you're making me question my well, show. Well, okay. I think you're right. I think the read is right that he's lost his mind and he's not thinking straight, and he's going on a psycho rampage and killing whoever's in his way. But I still think it's the right decision. But I'm not sure that's the thought process going on in his head. Yeah, it's kind of like. From the bird's eye view, you see how it makes sense, but it, by accident, like he didn't by intend accident. for that. 
Yeah. So he's gone on his rampage, mm-hmm. and he's rescued Allie. Here she is, limp. Elevators still work. I can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take the stairs in an emergency. All the signs say so. <laughs> that's, right. that's, that's what the sign says exactly. Yeah, like what if he gets stuck in the elevator and then the other guys, like the bad guys, just shoot into the door? Right. What if the bad guys are in the first floor and they're like, ding. What? What? Uh, okay. Uh. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, take the stairs. Take the stairs. Take the Joel. stairs. You've lost your mind here, yeah, and take take the stairs. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they've escaped. You know, he grabbed the car from the parking lot, and they're heading to Wyoming to go live with Tommy. Look at the road condition. We're twenty years down the road. This isn't a winter. That's how many? That's twenty winter summer cycles mm-hmm. on an unmaintained road. Mm-hmm. This thing. This thing ain't gonna be this smooth. I have a feeling. This is better than the left too. This is better than the streets in my city right now. We have like (laughs) active trucks. (laughs) Yeah. If you go too fast, you're gonna break an axle probably on one of these. There's gonna be potholes everywhere. That's right. I don't know if it'd be impassable after 20 years. If anybody's like a road engineer, let us know. But let us know like what's the rate at which roads break down before they become like unusable. Gotta repave. Yeah, this road looks great. Even the paint. Even the paint's good. Even the paint's good. A little yeah. sign here. Yeah. Deer, deer crossing. And there's no, like, dirt and rocks and trees falling onto the road. Just things, incurs- incursions onto the road. It's Even somehow the, still clean. The curb and the grass. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the curb. The shoulder here, the shoulder here. Nice and clean. Maybe, Maybe. in the apocalypse, some type of woodland animal adapted to clean the roads uh-huh. um, as a survival evolutionary advantage the moose yeah. the moose has evolved antlers that turned into a plow mm-hmm. and together mm-hmm. as a unit a bunch of moose mises mooses plow the roads plow the roads and their shit is salty so they just diarrhea it on the one end and plow on the other this is stupid <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah it makes brown ice <laughs> super slippery and uh it stinks when you when you fall so this is the wyoming town mm-hmm. um i'm looking at this river here mm. uh, i can't really tell which way it flows i think it's flowing uh from the top of the picture down to the bottom of the picture but it's hard to tell either way i'm not seeing a lot of flood control that's right if there's a deluge I, I see wooden walls. That town is going to get inundated. I hope they know that's coming. I know they have a dam somewhere, but yeah. they're right down on the floodplain in the silt, literally. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. From the width of this thing, it's a slow river. Right? Fast, faster river would be narrower and you'd see the running. And then we can look at the tree line. This is the flood line. So the question is, is this height higher than the city? And sure is. (laughs) (laughs) They they built this city underneath the flood line. So I don't want to live there. (laughs) I want to live like right here (laughs) in the dry spot looking down on them. Or I'm just hoping maybe it's dammed upriver and this is the trickle that they can control. We do know they have a dam. That's true. You know. That means that their that dam is the town. They have to make sure that's maintained and defended. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But maybe in the post-apocalypse times, there are mutant cordycep beavers that build very good dams as a survival evolutionary advantage. Something they work with the moose and I, I, don't, know, I, don't, know, I don't know the plow moose and the cordyceps beaver dam makers. Beaver dam makers, yeah. What but beavers make dams when they're healthy. Or like regular uh-huh, uh-huh. Is, the, is the cordyceps beavers making like ultra dams oh yeah yeah because beavers usually have to sleep because they're like mammals whatever right? but when they're cordyceps infused they can run like zombies just 24 7 no big deal so actually behind the camera is just a massive beaver dam mm-hmm. <laughs> you, turn, you pan around and just gigantic beaver dam it's full of all the cordyceps yeah. and stuff that's my head cannon (laughs) 
Enemy of man. Joel is the enemy of man. He kills all those people in there. He kills the doctor. That may have been one of the few doctors left for humanity. Because who, who, where are they going to get new training? Training for new doctors. Like medical schools are all gone. Books, there are books, but it's not the same as like being in the class with the surgeons and stuff. That's right. So Joel is the enemy of man. No matter how hard you try, no matter how many people you kill, she's going to grow up, Joel. That's right. Then what? How long till she's torn apart by infected or murdered by raiders? Because she lives in a broken world that you could have saved. It isn't for you to decide. Or you. True. So what would she decide? Because I think she'd want to do what's right. And you know it. She does. That is what she would have done. (laughs) It's not too late. Even after what you've done, we can still find a way. You've just come after her. Not wrong. Not wrong. He's right. Yeah, she would have come after him. But she's right. Ellie would have given her life, I guess, to the mission. Although they didn't ask. I mean, I guess I guess I'm guess i filling in blanks. I don't know if she would have died for it. Like, she definitely wanted to go to them, uh, to the Fireflies. On the other hand, she's also a kid. like, And she also has lacking information because the fireflies hide stuff from her she never got to see what their their facility operates like they knocked her out and then they put her right into surgery so oh gosh i mean on one hand joel is the enemy of man because he also he killed the doctor and marlene who is an excellent firefly organizer and commander right like at this point we don't know if fedra is going to be the future government or if fireflies are and you you've just taken down someone who's very smart well, was it just one thing I was going to bring up is, <laughs> let's say you're in a hospital mm-hmm. today, in modern day, okay, and there's five patients in the hospital. One needs some kidneys, one needs a liver, one needs a heart, and what else do we transplant? Brains. Yeah, so there's five organs that five different patients need. So why don't we go to the waiting room and pick a person, kill them, Take their organs and rescue five people. I've never well, been that's in this a situation. one for five. I've never been in the situation. Is that not how we do things? That I, is I don't not know how we do things. Okay. Oh, okay. Why? Why don't if? Why don't we do that? Why don't we go to the waiting room of the hospital, kill somebody? Because you get five lives for one. Yeah. To the extreme, we're doing Ellie is one for everybody. Is that the right thing to do? Where's the crossover? Yeah, is there a magic number where the trade becomes okay? Let's do that. Okay. 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 But but it's not just Ellie versus for for everyone alive. It's Ellie versus for for everyone that could possibly be alive in the future. Like humanity could be ended by the Cordyceps. We need to prioritize surviving, uh, keeping the species alive. So in that case, we're talking. We're not just talking finding the cure, which is his whole supply chain, logistics, expertise, nightmare. But then we're talking the logistics of distributing the cure. Sure, sure, sure. I can deal with that later. But I just need to first be able to know, is this something that could work? But that only works if we keep Ellie alive. If, if, If I cut out her brain... And then I don't, I mean, how am I going to keep her brain on ice for like, they did not think this through. Put it on like, ice. Put it on ice. It's chill, chill idea. But I also suspect that she's not the only one in the world. I would be hard to believe that she's the only one. You got billions of people. This is a, this is a small section of the world, just North America. We've got Africa, which has much higher genetic diversity. We've got Asia, India, all of those places, much larger populations, maybe. And they're going to be having the same sort of chaos. And through that, there's probably people in similar situations to Ellie, maybe differently cured people. Um, I would find it hard to believe she's the only one. And so so actually, Ellie's mom really messed up. She really messed up by, by telling Marlene that she had cut the umbilical cord before she had been bitten. That's right. She should have told Marlene, I got bit and cut the umbilical cord quickly. Just watch this baby for a day or two, like... See if it mm-hmm. dies. Like that's totally within Marlene's ability to just put it in a box and <laughs> put the baby in a box with some air holes and be like, does it turn or not? Because if the if Ellie's mother had told Marlene the truth about being bitten while the umbilical cord was connected, they could have 
recreated it now now kind kind of awful like but like if this is for saving humanities for for humanity then maybe you sacrifice some mommy i don't want to finish the sentence well i mean okay but marlene has critical eyewitness information mm. about how ellie got immune she has important information she's not thinking about okay let's just kill ellie because cure is there but what about the information that she knows about the circumstances of Ellie's birth. Right. From from her perspective, what she saw and heard was that uh, that Ellie was cut from the umbilical cord and then the mother was bit. So in principle, she should be clean, should be separated. The, 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 the immunity mm -hmm. should be purely just random happenstance of Ellie's genetics. Mm -hmm. So a good doctor would make sure to do those studies, you know? And he'd be like, was anybody there? Do we know anybody that was there at the birth? What's the mother? Who's the father? Who's the grandparents? Do you know for sure? Oh, Marlene, you were there at the you birth? Well, let's take some notes here. What oh, did wait, you, you, were, you weren't quite there at the birth? You were very close? Oh, wait, 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 you were the umbilical was court? Did you see that? Did you see it for sure? Yeah. Right, and then there would just be a little bit of question, and so then you'd have a little bit of variance of maybe this could right. be, that's right. So, so this doctor is not a good thinker. Right. So he didn't even know that he has an eyewitness. He should, the line of questioning should have directly led to Marley and giving her testimony mm -hmm. about what happened at birth. And in he fact, doesn't need to be militant about it. He just yeah. needs to be a little bit curious. Yeah, ask, ask, fig, figure ask it out. these questions. What's the situation before you yeah. before you start slicing and dicing? And if he's if he doesn't know what questions to ask, he needs to find somebody who knows what questions to ask or get to the library start reading he should know what to look up at least epidemiology and mm -hmm, stuff like mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. to figure out what kind of questions do i ask to figure out like hey i got somebody who's immune that's right so he's a quack and, he's a and, quack. and even even if you don't even people that are not trained in the medical field can still ask questions that can be meaningful they, they could they may not yeah. may not be technical but hey that sometimes that's what you need you need an outside eye to ask a yeah. ask a seemingly simple question that actually has right. big effects right all right that's right but instead he's like stab 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 kill her what's the cure stab 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 i'm a scalpel man scalpel slice scalpel 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 and dice the doctor's the enemy of man i changed my mind <laughs> okay so they get out they get out and they trek trek um to 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 tommy's house mm -hmm. and um this is i noticed this i noticed this she when ellie recounts the people that she's killed we didn't know what to do and she says we can just wait it out be all poetic and just lose our minds together and then she did and i had to her name was riley and she was the first to die and then it was tess and then sam that's not on you so she blames herself for Sam, but not Henry, whatever. <laughs> oh, the little brother. She's like, oh, he died because of me. But like the older brother also died because they go like. <laughs> actually, Henry dying is actually more on Ellie than Sam is. Sam died because of circumstances sort of out of her control. He got bit during the he, if I remember, he got bit during the shootout with the soccer mom team. That's right. And it was total chaos at that point. Mm -hmm. She has very little control over the situation. But she did have control over how Henry learns that information. And That's it true. was handled poorly. Also, the preacher? Doesn't matter. That, Doesn't that one I'm okay with. But like Henry, like, yo, he was a friend. Mm -hmm. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. And then to wrap up the end of the episode and the season... Ellie and Joel have this this deep conversation about what is the nature of their relationship. Well, maybe that's not what Swear you want. Swear to me. Swear to me that everything you said about the fireflies is true. I swear. What are the implications of him lying to her? Well, one is he is willing to lie to protect Ellie's feelings. That's one. It's one thing Marlene couldn't do. I didn't interpret it like that. I thought that he was lying to keep her from knowing that he tricked her, that he took her away from the thing that she had been wanting to do for several years now, that he, he lied because he's protecting his own feelings. 
I mean, he wants her to live. And the only way he's interpreting it as she's going to be able to live guilt free is if she believes he took her out of there in a justified way. So by lying, he's giving emotional cover. But he's also, you're right, he could he's he might also just be motivated by covering up his own feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it comes down to, did he make the decision for his purely, his selfish reasons? Or did he see the incompetence indicators? Uh, that, I mean, I mean, Marlene explained to him that they're going to cut Ellie open and do surgery. And he's like, what, what are they doing? So, so if he's reading those incompetency, incompetency cues and saying, I need to get Ellie out and she's going to be guilty for not saving humanity. Cause that's what everyone told us she would be. Then I see, I see it. I see it. He's protecting her by lying. But I do think that he didn't see the incompetence markers. He was just seeing red. You can't kill her. This is my hope in life. Fuck all y'all. Fuck all y'all. But here, I think it could be a combination of two. Selfish mm. reasons and protector reasons. I see it. Yeah, because if he, if he tells her the truth that he didn't have to take her away, she's going to turn around. She's going to turn around and walk right back. And now that's risky because, A, just the traveling. And B, he already know what Firefly wants to do with her. Yeah. And they're going to kill Joel like on site, so he can't escort her. I see it. The fatherly thing to do is to lie. Oof. What would you say? Tell, tell us in the comments. Yeah. What do you guys think? And, but, but be nice to each other, because I, <laughs> I can see this getting nasty. <laughs> My follow-up is, what is Ellie thinking? Like, could she, by asking him if to, to swear to, like, there's already a hint that she knows something's not quite right. So watch her facial expressions. What is she thinking? Does, does, yeah, yeah, let's see. Let's, let's see. Let's guess. Okay. I don't know how to read that. I believe I think it's not belief with post facto rationalization to belief. That's I don't know what that is called. Oh, so you're, you're okay. So you're saying you're saying that she doesn't believe him because things don't seem right. Things don't feel right. He's definitely too emotionally connected, and the mission's over, and she doesn't know why. And so she asked, but at the same time, she's like calculating, like should I trust him? And you can see like that. She's thinking it over. She's formulating the words in her head. But then at that last bit, she like nods and she's like, I'm going to choose to trust him. Mm -hmm. I thought it could be that she's like, he's lying to me. I'm going to have to get around him somehow. Like, I can't not trust him anymore because I asked him and he he lied. That's what that nod was. Maybe Ellie. oh, 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 I just thought of this. Maybe Ellie is protecting Joel. By saying, okay, like, hey, I know you lied. And I know you need me to say it's okay. I'm going to say okay to protect you. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Now I don't know what's going on. I don't know but I still don't, I don't think she believes him. Maybe there's a wondering and that wondering, I, there's, it's not a full belief at this point. I could also imagine saying, saying that she has like her doubts in him. But she's consciously choosing to put that behind her, and I'm going to move forward in life trusting Joel. Oof, I don't know. I don't know how to read this. Well, I guess we got to wait two years for season two. Yeah, you're right. Uh, That's right. That's right. Okay. 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 Catch us in two years. <laughs> or so. Uh, so is, so my, my is Joel the enemy of humanity? I I don't know. He might very well be the ultimate villain because he may have just screwed humanity out of the cure. Um, he also might be the hero by protecting Ellie from people that would have wasted her gift. Right. Oof, boy. I think that in my in my opinion, the probabilities that he was he is the hero, even if it's that's he's not that's not what he's thinking. I think is much 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 higher. And he's the enemy of humanity. Yeah, I mean, because because 
they were incompetent. The fireflies, they they didn't know what they were doing, and they were not being precautious. They're, they weren't being safe with their only only example of, of immunity. And if that doctor was a quack, then actually killing him might be the right thing. Because if he's floating around being dangerous and people are believing him, he could be harming people quite badly. He could be like, yeah, like a, like really badly. Like a, like a doctor could have worked in killing people type thing. Yeah. Join us next time for season two, The Last of Us. Yeah, in what, 2025? We'll 2025. See Until then, <laughs> watch The Mandalorian with us. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. That's going nicely. Cool. See you then. Cool.